Welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen, to another round of Vicious vs. Action on Grudge Match Unlimited, the show that finds the most comparable opponents from all the universes of fandom and allows them to face off against each other to determine who would take home top honors. Today's match crosses two sci-fi film badasses who have cult followings by pitting the ultimate bounty hunter against the ultimate escaped convict. From the fiction of Star Wars, mercenary extraordinaire Boba Fett, and the Alpha Furion from Pitch Black, Riddick. Now while the odds would seem to be immediately tipped in Boba Fett's favor, considering the mercenary extraordinaire Boba Fett constantly uses a wide variety of high-tech weaponry, whereas Riddick tends to be much more low-tech and wielding blades and knived weapons alone, you have to keep in mind that that is where Riddick thrives, and that kind of weaponry and that style of fighting. Even when he ascended to the position of head of the Necromonger army, he still shirked owning or utilizing any kind of energy-based weaponry in favor of small blades and knives as his primary weapons. So that kind of weaponry tends to be exactly what Riddick thrives using, and he tends to fight him against energy weapon wielding mercenaries all the time and always 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 comes out on top but will he be able to come out on top against the top bounty hunter of the empire against boba fett so let's take a look at these two characters in a little more detail starting with boba fett first created in 1978 a full two years before his film debut in the empire strikes back in 1980 Boba Fett is a Maladorian warrior and a clone of the infamous Jango Fett, who was the universe's top mercenary and top bounty hunter before Boba Fett was. Jango Fett died by the hands of the Jedi Master Mace Windu at the Battle of Geonosis, and that was when Boba Fett was very young, so he didn't have anybody to raise him through his teenage years and into young adulthood, so he had to sort of do that on his own, and he dedicated his entire life to living up to his father's legacy and becoming the best bounty hunter in the galaxy, and he did that. When the Empire came to prominence, he became the best mercenary and best bounty hunter of the entire Empire, utilized by Darth Vader specifically in many, many occasions throughout the years. Boba Fett was thought to have met his end on Tatooine when he was knocked into the Sarlacc Pit during a battle with Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, and the forces of Jabba the Hutt. However, even though he was knocked into the Sarlacc pit and was thought to have died by the beast the Sarlacc, he actually survived. Is the only being to ever have escaped the Sarlacc pit, and he fought his way out of the belly of the beast. Boba Fett then went on to many other adventures and many other times fighting Jedi and non-Jedi alike and still maintaining his infamous nature as the best mercenary and one of the best fighters in the entire galaxy. Boba Fett wields a wide variety of high-tech weaponry, most notably a variety of energy blasters. He even has wrist gauntlets on both of his wrists that have blasters built into them, as well as grenade launchers, zip lines, blades for close combat fighting. He has a jetpack, which allows him very brief moments of flight, and also has a small tactical rocket on it as well. He has Maladorian based armor and helmet that provides a good degree of resistance to energy weapon fire, but has a lot of areas on it that are just cloth covered, so it doesn't provide total full 100% body protection from any and all types of fighting and any and all types of weaponry, but does provide a fairly good resistance to most energy based attacks. And his helmet provides a heads up display inside of it, which allows him to track, see in darkness, uh, has a variety of different scanning modes and built in AI into it as well to allow him to more easily find his targets. Richard B. Riddick of the Pitch Black series is one of the last survivors of his race, the Furian race. A prophecy was foretold that the head of the Necromongers, a very powerful army that was crossing the entire galaxy, the, the head of the Necromonger army would be destroyed by a Furian. So he went to the Furian homeworld and destroyed it and thought he had wiped out all of the Furians, but a scant few of them survived, including Richard B. Riddick. 
He became a company ranger later on in life once he grew up a little bit and an elite soldier, but he opposed the company's torturous penal system that they were using and uh, compiled a lot of evidence against them to try to get them to change the way their system was run. But they didn't want to change everything, so basically they destroyed all of his evidence and they framed him and jailed him to keep him quiet. It was at this point that he became a chronic escaped convict, and in his attempts to escape and gain his freedom, he would murder people over and over again. But he always murders people who threaten him specifically or threaten his freedom, so he always maintains a sort of anti-hero role rather than becoming a full-on villainous character. Now, Richard B. Riddick is a Alpha Furian, which means he has a few additional abilities that no human possesses. Most notably, he's most known for his eye shine. He has said that he had a surgical procedure done in a dark prison that allowed him to see in the dark. It is sometimes thought that this is not actually what happened, but it was a gift of the Furian race that he evolved as an Alpha Furian. But either way, what it does is it allows him to see in complete and total darkness and even allows him to see in normal light conditions. The only time it is a hindrance is when there's bright light shined in his face which can cause him pain. In addition to this, he also has advanced physical abilities and generally enhanced senses. His ability to smell and hear are highly enhanced and his fighting skills are very enhanced as well. He's been known to break bones on himself and just snap them right back into place with very little discomfort or dislocate bones and body parts in order to escape from being tied up, things like that. And his basic fighting skills are such that even the massive super speed infused leader of the Necromongers could not defeat him in combat. That he was able to fight hand to hand with the Lord Marshal of the Necromongers and was able to kill him. So Riddick has a lot of enhanced combat skills. Most usually he likes to employ bladed weapons and hand weapons in his fights, even though he fights people who use guns and energy-based weapons all the time. So having looked at these two characters, it's time to decide what would happen if they were to compete in one-on-one -on -one competition. The winner would be... Riddick. While stated that Boba Fett does have the advantage in long-range fighting, Riddick is a master of utilizing his stealth, the darkness, which they would most certainly be fighting in, and the local environment to disappear from view, stay out of his enemy's sightlines, and get right up close and personal with them. He fights characters who use shotguns, energy guns, energy pulse rifles all the time, and he manages to close that distance to get in real close and use his bladed weapons. And Boba Fett is no stranger to using hand-to-hand -hand and close combat weaponry himself, so it's not hard to assume that this fight would get very, very close quarters combat very quickly. But when that happens, even though Boba Fett might be able to hold his own for a while, no one has ever been able to defeat Riddick in close quarters combat, including up to and even the Lord Marshal of the Necromongers, who moves at superhuman speeds. So if Riddick manages to get in very, very close, and he most likely would be able to, Boba Fett's armor would not be able to save him from the stabbings that Riddick would inflict upon him, because there are several areas on Boba Fett's armor that are mostly just cloth covered, even though they are a bit more durable than regular cloth, Riddick has been able to stab right through Necromonger armor with very little effort, so any kind of sturdy knife wielded by Riddick would be able to go right through to Boba Fett's most vital organs, and Riddick would end up taking home the win. So even though the odds would be stacked against him from the start, Riddick is a master of overcoming odds stacked against him and would most likely come away victorious in this fight. So message me down below, let me know what you thought of the outcome of this fight, and as always, any suggestions for future grudge matches. We'll see you next time on the next edition of Grudge Match Unlimited.